I've lost my son. He's not dead. And I know where he is. Be hard pressed not to. I think they've stopped now. Plays have it with Classic FM, I can tell you. Oh, other radio stations are available. They just don't have enough adverts for the Daily Mail. <laughs> they remind me of my dad, the adverts for the Daily Mail. <laughs> Loved that newspaper. Which, if you knew him, would explain an awful lot. <clears throat> anyway, I had to turn it off because, well, Claire de Lune just wasn't made to be accompanied by bed springs. <sighs> the problem is, in my mind, he's only barely finished school. There's that time, isn't there? That time when you're such a big part of their world and then suddenly you're not. Not needed. Hmm. We used to watch telly together. There was this stupid American show called Book Rogers in the 25th century. It's from the 70s, I think. We found it on one of those digital channels that nobody ever watches. It's about this spaceman who finds himself in the future, the fearless Buck Rogers. Only ever got upset about losing everything he'd ever known once in the first episode. After that, he was fine and dandy. Took it all in his stride. Met every problem with a cheesy grin and a cheeky wink. Ho <laughs> ho it was rubbish. We'd have such a good laugh. I'd do an impression of the robot. Biddy biddy biddy, got your buck. And he'd laugh himself silly. <laughs> I used to make him laugh a lot. Mel Blanc did the voice of the robot. He did Bugs Bunny and Daffy Duck, all them. Uh, Mel Blanc, not Mel Blanc, as she'd probably say. Biddy biddy biddy. He'll be down in a minute. He'll bound down those stairs and march in here with the unmistakable smugness of a man who's just had sex. Hi, Dad, he'll say. Morning, I'll say. And then he'll busy himself putting the breakfast stuff on a tray because she likes her breakfast in bed. And that'll probably be the last thing we say to each other all day. They only met two months ago. Two months. I was happy for him, of course, but then he said they were thinking of moving in together and I thought, two months? Isn't that a bit soon for even making space in a drawer for the other person's socks. I don't understand relationships these days. There's a shock. Old man doesn't understand young people. But I don't. I mean, in my day, there were... Oh God, I'm saying in my day now. Oh. But in my day, you were going out with somebody or you weren't. Nowadays, you're dating, then seeing someone, and then after you've had the conversation, you might be going out. So they were, surely, just beginning to see each other? Oh, I can't believe I'm even trying to explain this. The point is, they weren't even at the socks in the door stage and now they're here, in my home. And I might as well not be. It was the virus. Of course, everything's a bloody virus now, isn't it? Anyway, that blonde buffoon twat was on the telly telling us all to stay home and the next thing you know, they've decided to isolate themselves here. And my breakfasts are accompanied by classical music arranged for bed springs and moaning. <sighs> I shouldn't go on about that. I suppose I miss it, you know, since his mother went. No, she did die. Brain aneurysm. Five years ago. Ooh, just like that. Doctor called it a ticking time bomb. <laughs> he had a way with words. I wonder, do we ever really know why people agree to marry us? 27 years we were together. And there were days, I admit, when I thought I'd cracked it. You know, thought I understood why she'd said yes. I wasn't bad looking. I made a laugh. I even had prospects. Which I fulfilled, head teacher. So I could provide for her. Not that she needed it. But there were so many days when I couldn't understand why she'd said yes. 
But not just a space in a drawer for my socks, but for space in our life. The rest of our life. Stretching out ahead of us. All those years. And all those socks. I know I was with her. She looked great. I can't deny it. <laughs> but looks barely get you through the first meal, really. For me, anyway. Lovely smile, of course, but she was kind. And smart. Oh, God, so, so smart. She was a nurse. Got to be a nurse consultant, doing research. <laughs> My brilliant wife. She'd know what to do now. She's an artist. The first time I met her, she told me, I work in the space between spaces, the creative hinterland of the ignored and cast aside regions of non-being. Yeah, it's bollocks. Possibly creative hinterland bollocks, but bollocks nonetheless. I once gave them an empty plate each at dinner time, and when he asked, where's the food? I said, oh, it's in the space between the spaces. <laughs> they didn't laugh. I used to make him laugh a lot. I was in the park this morning, my one hour of exercise. There was this family, well, a mum and two kids, about seven or eight, I'd guess, and they were running around like anything, <laughs> playing TIG, I think. And the mum was watching them, but the smiles on those kids' faces, it took me back. There's this one time, it was only about four, I should think, there was a bunch of kids round in the garden, playing some sort of game that seemed to involve running up and down the garden carrying a football. You know, the sort of game that only makes any sense to you when you're that age. And he got the ball, and he got to run ahead of all the others carrying the ball. And the look on his face, he was so happy, like he was king of the world. <laughs> it's such a perfect memory. So, I sat on a bench and watched them for a bit, and I turned, and there she was, sat next to me, his mother, my wife. She wasn't really there, of course, but it's like she was. And she looked at me, and she smiled, and she nodded, and I thought, she's unnaturally quiet today. And then she raised an eyebrow at me and I knew I was in trouble. <laughs> and then she smiled again. And then she was gone. She'd never really been there in the first place, but she was gone again. Back to the space between spaces. After a while I came home and they were sitting on the sofa. So I asked who wanted a brew and I boiled the kettle and brought the mugs in and I sat with them for a bit. I asked if I could see some of her work. There was this one piece. It's a sculpture and it's shaped like a... Well, I don't know what it is. It's an abstract, which means it doesn't look like anything. But she said it represented an imaginary column of light. A column of light that isn't there. Light. Anyway, I asked her how much for it. And she said, I didn't realise it at the time, but I made it for you. Which I thought was quite lovely. Bollocks, but quite lovely. As I held it, the imaginary column of light, I caught his eye. Something in that expression, I thought. Something familiar. And then it hit me. I used to think this was a story about a man whose son didn't need him anymore. But maybe it's about a son who needs his dad to understand him.
So, here we are, in the future. It's where we all end up eventually. It might not be what we were expecting. Maybe we've lost a lot along the way. Maybe everything we've ever known. But it's where we are. <laughs> I don't think I can be fearless. But maybe I can be a bit more like Buck Rogers. Take it in my stride. Without the cheesy grin. Biddy, biddy, biddy.